Hi friends, this video is just a brief tour of Skyward and a few tips and tricks on different settings and preferences to make your life easier in the elementary world. So when you log into Skyward, it should look something like this. Just so we know there are actually three kinds of Skyward. This is Skyward Student, um, which I know is confusing because you're a teacher, not a student, but this is where we house the student data. Then there's also Skyward Finance, which you won't really have access to unless you are a school secretary or something like that. And then there's also Skyward Employee, and that's the HR portal where you can see those kinds of things. We're talking about Skyward Student. Um, so the first thing I want to show you that's a little silly, but I think kind of fun is if you come up here to preferences where you're next to where your name is and account and exit, you can click preferences and you can actually change the color. So it's kind of fun. So if you're obsessed with the color, like I am, I love purple. You can change it to purple. I haven't really found that any of these other um, preferences are super um, helpful. Um, there is this use larger font sizes. Um, so if you have a hard time seeing it, you can do that. Sometimes Zoom messes with stuff, but sometimes this messes with stuff too. So just give it a try if that's something you really need, but if not, I probably wouldn't mess with it. Another thing that's very true for you to know about Skyward is it does not save anything automatically. So if you made any changes, you always have to press this save button. Um, and then also you never wanna use your browser's refresh or back button because it's a secure portal, so it will kick you out. So you always wanna use Skyward's back button. It's usually in two places and the save button. So I'm gonna press save. So you'll see I press save and now all my stuff is in purple. All right, so where we're gonna spend most of our time is here in the teacher access portal. You don't really need the food service. Um, in teacher access, there's a lot with grade books. We're gonna go there. My students is great because it lists all the students and all of their information, parents, siblings, um, even their computer logins and their passwords. My classes isn't as useful in elementary because our all our classes are this have the same students in them. Um, then we have post daily attendance, which is probably what you use Skyward for the most. So if I click on that, I can come here and take my attendance. You probably click here by doing it by name, which is exactly what you should do. Um, but it's fun to explore with these. I can't click on them right now because I'm preserving student privacy and data. But if you click on by seating chart, you can actually see a list of all of your students and you can click to see their photos and see a little photo of each of your students and with their name underneath it. So that's helpful. And there's a printer friendly version. So that's helpful at the beginning of the year when you're trying to get students names down or even to print for a subs reference. All right, so there's always this back button. Um, you'll notice that your browser things are hidden, but you never want to hit back um, through the browser. You always want to use it here in Skyward, the back button. All right. Um, as far as these two things, these help you see if you have any students with IEPs or 504s. I would work mostly with um, the people in charge of those that you're building, your school psych or school counselor, um, and then your resource teacher to help with that. And then your conference scheduler is used for parent-teacher conferences twice a year. All right, so we're gonna go to grade books. Um, one thing I forgot to mention in the attendance is that the reason you have two home rooms is because in elementary, we actually take attendance twice a day so that students can be marked present or absent for a half day. Um, so you take attendance in that very first homeroom in the mornings. You don't really want to do anything else in the second homeroom. It has to be there for how the program works, but I would encourage you to not do anything in that one just because it doesn't always save or work really well. So I'm going to click on the ELA gradebook because all of the gradebooks really work the same. Now you'll notice that I've hidden the students' names here. So um, that's why there's no students listed. 
um, but you would have student names here. So just going through the grade book really quickly, um, other access are some different things. We really don't use a lot of these things in elementary for um, in Skyward. The message center will allow you to send an email to all of the parents in your class, but we have Parent Square for that now, which is better, so we don't use that. In classes, you can switch between any of your different grade books without having to go completely out and back in. Events we're going to talk about later, but an event in Skyward is what we would call an assignment or a test. So instead of picking one of those, they named them events to make it more exciting. Um, comments are comments about that grade book. And in elementary, we only use the comments in the homeroom section, and that is what will populate on the report card. And remember, only use them in that first homeroom. Again, attendance, we only take attendance in the homeroom, so we're not worried about that. Grade marks are is not very useful. Posting status just tells you what grade period. We only have two now. Um, so you can switch back and forth. I've never really found a need to do that. Reports I'll talk about in a different um, video. But what we're going to talk about right now is our display options. So the first thing that I like to do at the beginning of the year is change my student display. So if you click on student display, you can see you can have it um, sh show the names differently. And you'll notice mine is on suppress so that I can preserve student privacy, but you can have it list the first name first or the last name first, a shortened version, which for some reason is the default, uh, which I really don't like. Um, and you can have it take up more space or have it squished together. Another thing is if a student goes by a different name than their legal name and the parents have entered that in at registration, then it can display that um, name instead. Um, I will tell you that sometimes um, parents, when they register in Skyward, it says nickname. And so sometimes they'll put in like their cute little nickname for their student, like pumpkin. And so then that'll show up in your grade book. So just be, <laughs> be careful using that. Um, Normally in Skyward, you can tell if it's their official name, if it's all in capital letters, and then the um, other name will show up with only the first letter capitalized. So that's another trick to tell what name you're seeing. Um, you can see the different things if you really wanted them shown. Um, student ID, we don't use that a lot. If you want all all your drop students. So if a student has been pulled from your class and you want them to show up, then you can put that there. Um, in elementary, there's not a big need for the school or the grade level. Um, and then these indicators are those little um, letters by their name that say if they have a health alert or they've done their media release, which you'll always see those um, when you go into my students. So if you don't want to have to bother seeing those in the grade book, you can do that. Another great thing is you can sort it. So if you um, have your class in a particular order, like I know I used to have class numbers, if you're doing it by first name or last name, you can change that. Um, you can even sort it by student's assigned seat, and that would be done by going into um, and changing when you do attendance, you can make a little seating chart there um, just to make things easier. I think I changed seats a lot, so that wasn't something I used, but this one was something I used a lot. You can modify the grade sheet sequence. So for example, I would have my kids in alphabetical order and then inevitably someone would move or I would get a late register and I'd have to put them at the end or plug them into a different hole and so they weren't completely in number order, uh, alphabetical order. So I could go in and move that kid on on here so that they were in the order that I had them in number order or had them turn things in. in. So I'm going to leave this as sorted by first name and I'm going to press save because we always press save in Skyward. So these were those student indicators I was talking about. All right, um, event display in, I, we'll talk about that later um, when we talk about events. 
um, grade period display, like I talked about earlier with the posting status, that we only have two. It's always going to show you the one that we're currently in. And then if you want to see both, you can click that. Um, I'm going to hit my back button. And then you can see all the skills by event or by student. You can hide events. So remember, those are assignments and tests, or you can show them all. Um, backing up a bit, sorry, these gray columns in the grade book are your headers. So these are all the speaking and listening. Um, these are all the reading and writing standards. And then these are the actual standards. And if I change the um, display, let me get in the right model. Um, if I change the displays for, um, <clears throat> it will, sh it will change like instead of just say speed, it'll show all of them. But if you hover over them, you can see that it will come up and show what that whole standard is. If you make it show, it shows the whole standard and makes your grade book gigantic and hard to work with. So I don't recommend that. The coolest display option that not everyone knows about that I wanted to show you and highlight here is the expected levels of performance. This is something that was made specifically for the elementary world and our mastery grading that we do here. So you have to go in and turn it on or add it. So I'm going to go here to ELP. And again, it stands for expected levels of performance. Now I'm going to add an event so you can see what this does. And I'm going to do it quickly because in a different video, I'll show you how to add an event. But I'm adding an event. I'm not really caring what it is. But you can see my ELP set is there and showing. If I didn't want to use it, then I can say don't use. But it's there. I'm going to say save and grade. And then when I go through and add some grades, oops, there's no four in elementary. I'm just making stuff up so you can see, and I'm gonna say save. Now you can see that here under this standard, I have an assignment or a test, um, and it's showing me their grade, but also in a glance, their progress with the color coding. So imagine if you had all of your tests for math or spelling in, and you could see very easily what their mastery was because you have all of them there and they're showing you, oh, they're mostly twos or mostly threes, or I'm seeing a downward trend. I need to do some intervention here. It can be very helpful. And then if there's not a grade put in, then it just defaults to the blank color. So those are all of the best display options um, and settings that help make your life great. Thank you.